which we have handled, which we have seen with our eyes, wrapped again. This is the word of truth. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. Oh, yes. We were eyewitnesses of this thing. We walk in Bible, but we have seen the Lord. Our eyes have seen the Lord. I don't know about you. When you have become a supernatural Christian, God gets into you and starts walking himself. He no longer leads. He is now Ayakara. 100 percent true. true. I saw German written on your forehead like German. 15 October. Yes. 1981. Better do it. You know me and you know everything. <laughs> if I be a prophet of God, miracle money now. Declared miracle money. There's 55,000 in his bank account. How much is this? Bob. It is 150 and I only had item. Supernatural weight loss. Somebody who is sick can just be healed like that. Yes. This is the good news we preach. A good news world with Hubert Angel, provoking a reaction. And always worth hearing. Verse number one of Ezekiel 8. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month. As I sit in my house. Notice here. It says, I was sitting in my house. Mm. That's Ezekiel. As I sit in my house. And the elders of Judah sat before me. That the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Imagine the prophet is actually standing with people in one location. Sitting with them. Talking at the same time. They are having a conversation and the Lord takes him while he's there. Hey, in other words, he's at his house and he's in another place. There are men who are dangerous. Given an ability by God that they can speak to you and be speaking to hundred more people. You think the conversation is ending here. Yet the man is having another conversation with someone else. This is the reason we are able to tell if somebody is lying to me or not. Because you can be talking to me and lie about another person. And I'm already questioning that person while we are talking. Here it is. And the elders of Judah said before me at the hand of the Lord. And the hand of the Lord what? Fell they upon me. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Then I beheld and lo a likeness as the appearance of fire. From the appearance of his loins, even downward fire. And from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness and the color of amber. Let's go. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my head. In other words, by the end, God grabbed him. <laughs> and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and heaven. Are you flowing? And brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. The door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the city of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. Imagine the prophet is there with the inhabitants, sitting in their house, in his own house, with his wife there. And God decides, I'm taking you from here, and the people he is discussing with don't even know the guy is gone. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> They are continuing a conversation and the man is not there. So it is possible to have a Sunday service with you now. I'm talking to somebody under the influence of my voice. I'm dealing with spiritual dynamics. The dual life of a prophet. That I can be sitting there and know about what you are saying. You can lie to me about your name and I argue with you. This is the reason why I can call somebody and say, your name is this. And they try to argue and say, call your mother. And the mother is called and confirms that was his name. He just doesn't know it. You wonder what happened. I'm talking to you, but your mother is also listening to my conversation. I decree and declare. Nobody shall lie to you or cheat you all the days of your life. to give you something. I wish there was somebody here who understood what we are dealing with. 
Listen, brothers and sisters. The born again life is not a story. Listen. It's God changing your life for his. Your life is not changed. God didn't come to change you. God came to replace your life with his own life. Turn to your neighbor and say, Christians are not human beings. <laughs> On this earth, there are 5.4 billion human beings. 2.4 are Christians. We are counted 7.8 billion. No, we are not. No, human beings are not 7.8. They are counting Christians among human beings. Watch this. Let me. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Listen, brothers and sisters, we are not human. I don't care how they look at us, we are not human. We are beyond what they see. We are not human. Aya. How on earth? Listen, how on earth does a person with cancer get to a hospital and they do chemotherapy for years, for months, and you come here? I touch the back of your head, and the cancer is in your stomach. And the doctor says, Where? 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 We, we, we are not human, brothers and sisters. We are not human. We operate by a different set of rules. We are not human. You might feel human one day, but you are not human. God supplanted you, removed the old you. See, see, this is why I hate preachers when they say those who want to give their lives to Christ. Give what? You. It's Christ giving you a life. A new one. Yes. Turn to yourself. No, don't go. Just go like this. I'm not human. I might feel like one, but I'm not human. <laughs> You're not hearing me. That's something to shout about. I don't know about you, but that's something to shout about. I don't know if you're hearing me. Paluje Kabalonda Kratesoma. I want you to go to Ezekiel 3. I want you to go Ezekiel 3, verse number 1, and then we'll get to 11 and keep going. Moreover, you said unto me, Son of man, eat thou that findest, eat the raw, and God speak unto the house of Israel. Let's go. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that raw. In other words, a scroll that he was given. The Lord said, Eat it. Scroll eaters. We're speaking to trees. No human being in their right mind can speak to trees. We speak to money to appear. Money. You think we are, we are normal guys? The moment you start telling yourself, I'm not normal. I'm very abnormal. The reason why Christians have lacked power is because they have not conscientized themselves to a reality. You can sit down because I know you. <laughs> What's this? So I opened my mouth and it caused me to do what? To eat the raw. What's this? Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat. Fill thy bowels with the raw that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Let's go. And he said unto me, son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. And for thou art not sent to a strange, to a people of a strange speech or of hard language, but for the house of Israel. He said, I'm sending you to your people. Not to many people of strange speech, of any hard language, whose words thou cannot understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. He says, if I send you to foreign people, they will hear you. Your own people won't hear nothing. 
This is the reason why if a pastor happens to Congo to be Congolese, the Congolese in the church are the noisemakers. If he so happens to come from Zimbabwe somehow, I'll just, you finish that for yourself. Someone from Kenya will be standing there going like, he's a man of God. One from your own country will be sitting there saying, I'm still analyzing. For three years. <laughs> God help your stupidity. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. God knew. Let's go. Oh, we are about to get there. Behold, I've made thy face strong again as their faces, and thy forehead strong again as their foreheads. Mm. And as an adamant had uh, uh, than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. Mm -hmm. Neither be dismayed at their looks. Though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I speak unto thee, receive in your heart and hear thine ears. Let's go. And God get thee to them that have captivity and to the children of thy people and speak to them and tell them, thus says the Lord, whether they hear or whether they will forbear. Are you getting this now? Then the spirit of the Lord took me up. Higher. And I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing saying, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Let's go. I heard also a noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another. The man is sitting there and is now somewhere else. And the noise of the wheels over again is them and a noise of great rushing. Watch this. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness and in the heart of my spirit but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Mm -hmm. Then I came, watch this now, I want you to never miss this. Then I came to them of the captivity of Tel Aviv that dwelt by the river of Cheba. He's in the spirit. He was in his house. And now he's with the inhabitants of Tel Aviv that dwelt by the river Cheba. And I sat there where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. The guy is at his house and is taken by God to go to a location where he's sitting with people for seven days. They think he's there, yet he's at home. Brothers and sisters, we are not human. You just need to look at your case. If it's a court case, just say, I'm not human. I'm not human. You look at your debtor and say, I'm not human. I'm not human. Come on. We are the new Superman in Christ. <laughs> oh, sometimes Clark Kent will even wear a little bit of suit and pretend to be a reporter somewhere. But then he will remove. His glasses and begins to see. <laughs> we will be seeing in a few seconds. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me saying, watch this. Son of man, I've made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at thy mouth and give them warning from me. When I said unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. Thou givest not a warning. Watch this now. Now the Lord is now giving him a warning to warn the people he sat with. They were discussing why is he got astonished. Notice he never said a word to them. But he was hearing what they were conversing. It is possible as a Christian to go in the camp of your enemy and sit there. Hey. While you are sleeping at home and you are sitting there and you hear everything they are saying. Ah! You no longer hear this one said, this one said, this one said. You know the whole conversation. You can see there's a no, 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 no. Not this one, not this one, but this one. Yeah, but not this one. That's why I'm a very dangerous man to lie to. Before you utter a lie, I already know you're about to lie. Hear this. Are you here? Pastor Chris, my spiritual father, was in a meeting. Before he got into a meeting, he was in a hotel room. You know, he's lodging before the, before the conference. Uh, while he was praying for the conference, the Lord took him to a location. Mm -hmm. 
And the Lord said, all I have to do is part a curtain. And the Lord went and grabbed the curtain of time and opened it like this. And he said, look what's happening. And he began to see Paul, Peter, Abraham sitting on the grandstands. And the Lord said, Chris, tonight, Paul will be watching your meeting. <laughs> hey! <laughs> you, even Thomas will make you excited. Oh. Apostle Paul is watching you tonight. Yeah. Peter is watching you tonight. Yeah. What causes men like that to have a conversation like that? He said, I looked and I began to see the saints of all taking their seats. Imagine the Lord opens and said, watch. And they were now taking their seats. What are you talking about? When you get to a certain level in the spiritual, it becomes so easy to decipher, to know exactly what somebody is planning before they plan it. You can actually run away from danger before danger comes. It's so easy to do so. Let me repeat this so for those who were not here with us. Do you know that every accident that happened, every crash that happened, every aircraft crash that happened, you paid for it. The ones who died in an airline accident paid for it. They worked for months to save money, to put in a bank and save for a ticket to die. Hey. Hey. Not only that, they even had to drive from their own homes to catch a flight that would kill them. Oh, you're still here. You are wondering, what did I pay for? <laughs> Everything you are going to die in, you paid for it. No God is killing nobody. When I was taken to, to hell in a visitation, I saw the gates of hell and they were written, welcome to hell. I said, who, who is being welcomed here? <laughs> the Lord said, I don't send anyone to hell. They send themselves. So they are welcomed for the... That's where they wanted to come. We are welcoming them. They booked the seat. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, whatever you are going to die of, <laughs> you should have seen it before it happens. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? <laughs> My spiritual father called me one time. He said, Angel, did you sleep well? I said, yeah, I'm good. And you say, he said, I didn't sleep. I said, what were you doing? He said, I was actually sitting down having a meeting with so and so. And I know the so and so can't have a meeting with him. Because the so and so is not on this earth. He said, I can't tell you. Because if I tell the world, they don't get it. He said, we had meeting. What sort of meeting is this? In your dream, you are just running away from someone. <laughs> some men of God, some Christians are seeing things that you should never, you can never see on this earth. Your concentration is the one that is off. Sit down, sit down, sit down. And hear me well. Never accept criticism, never. Even if they call it constructive criticism. Constructive criticism should only come from people who have been in construction. <laughs> because at least they know something about building. I can't take constructive criticism from somebody who has never constructed anything. Because if you have never constructed anything, then you are in the demolition crew. And it takes no intelligence for a wrecking ball to destroy a building. Never take it. 
We have wisdom from another world. We listen to rumor from another world. We are hearing a rumor from another world. The Bible you are holding is rumor from another world. That's the only constructive criticism I'm going to take. Hear this. Hear this. How on earth would Paul be told, go to a place where somebody will pray for your eyes to see? And then when he got there, the man already had a meeting with God somewhere. He said, how can I pray for this man since he kills believers? And the Lord said, no. While he's talking to Paul, God is talking to him. It seems as if there is a certain location, a position where they can go and speak to God while they are talking to you. <laughs> we live in two worlds. That's what the Bible says, we are come unto Mount Zion. And to an innumerable number of angels. Amen. To the spirits of just men made perfect. Amen. Are you still flowing? Yeah. Are you still flowing? Yeah. I remember the Lord took me to a place that I called heaven so many times. And he showed me William Marion Branham. Maria Hoodwood Etta. Wigglesworth. Kenneth E. Hagen. All these Alexander Dowie, John Alexander Dowie, and he put them in one place. They were sitting in one place as if around a holy fireplace. And from afar, maybe three meters away, he said, who do you want to be like among these? There were seven of them. I said, um, I want all of them combined. You know, the Bible says, Elijah said of Elijah, you asked, he asked a hard thing. There is a time to ask for a hard thing. It depends which church you go to. It depends which preacher you listen to. You can actually ask for a hard thing based on the word you receive. And guess what? And the Lord said, imagine yourself with a small prayer. And at that time I was doing seven hours a day. He said, imagine yourself loaded, armed with a small prayer. Ha! Ah, armed with a small prayer. So I imagine myself armed with a small prayer. Mm. Are you flowing or you've gone home? <laughs> now, after years, I, I'm writing now my book on going to heaven. I went to heaven. I, would, I went to hell coming soon. But on, I went to heaven. I wanted to, you know, I went to heaven. I wanted to actually write that story that I was shown this in heaven. And God said, no, that was in heaven. Hey. He said, you are in Mount Zion. He said, all these things that are taking place that you think I'm telling you from heaven's perspective, you are on Mount Zion. I said, are there special people that exist in this Mount Zion? He said, every Christian is there. Yeah. Now imagine, he said, every Christian is there, but they don't realize they are there. Yes. Says we are coming to Mount Zion. And an innumerable number of angels to the spirits of just men made perfect. Do you even know what that means? It means the ones that went to home to be with the Lord, they are still. Now look at you now. You think that person is dead from your house when they were a prayerful person, when they were a Christian? No. They are on Mount Zion. And where are you? You are on Mount Zion. Ay, 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 ay. La Shoko Prektakas. Sit down. Sit down. When her son, when her son died, and they said for 40 minutes, declared dead, rushed to my hotel room here in, in, in town here. I don't know what is that called. Kanaruav. And I'm in there. They knocked. Uh, we have a problem. She's crying. What is happening? Uh, my son has been declared dead. I said, don't worry. I'll talk to God. <laughs> now, listen to me. Some death you keep quiet. Some death you know where my position now. I know I'm... In that moment, when I heard it, something was triggered in my system. I knew who I was. I said, don't worry about it. Call now. Called. It's back to life. What is taking place? Why do we leave others and why do we speak when others happen? The reality is when you know you are in a certain location, when you are conscious of it, 
Sometimes you're not conscious of it. His friend died in Dubai there. He said, what do I do? He took a wristband. Wristband that he was wearing for spirit embers. Him. Now you don't earn nothing. This one, 40,000 pounds a week as a footballer. He's thinking I have a wristband. <laughs> Playing around with it. He takes it, puts on a guy. And they are there. I don't know if he had or did or something on some nonsensical or nonsense subject that he was. And he just put the person, wristband, back to life. <laughs> Listen. Imagine somebody repeating, repeating, and nothing is taking place. And then, boom, one. Did he call me? No. He knew something that was connecting this to that. There is a world we are in. You just don't feel it that you are there, but you are really there. We can talk to you on a scale of one to zero. Or zero to one. And it's still the same speed. Your money can actually listen to you. I know, you see one thing, the problem is, while you're doing it, the devil knows how to press the gears. He knows where you end. I was dealing with some leaders yesterday, and I'm about to finish. Say we are not you men. <laughs> we are not you men. I was dealing with some leaders yesterday and I was dealing with this issue of the worst case scenario. All right? So you call it WCS, worst case scenario. So one of the young men said, as my spiritual father, how do I know, how do I really operate the way you operate before your spiritual father? I think it was Jordan, right? Jordan. Yeah, brother Jordan. I said, that's a very good question. But the thing you need to do is to deal with the worst case scenario. He said, what is that? I said, what I've done with Pastor Chris is I deal with what is called the worst case scenario. From a young age, I knew exactly what was my spiritual father. Even when I detoured, I knew exactly that even the person I detoured to testified that I told him who my spiritual father was. He even posted it. Yeah. Reality. This is true. So there was no father I ran away from. Even the father people think I ran away from is the one testifying that, uh-uh, I was told this is the father. But I had no access. Now hear this. Are you flowing? Yes. Are you flowing? I said, the thing I did for me to go back was because of the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is, what if Pastor Chris comes to my house, beat up my children, beat up my wife, beat up my mother. Worst case scenario. I tell then myself that I will, I will be angry. Then I know I have not reached their sonship. Then I practice myself towards that thing. No, you didn't get that. Until I say, if he does it, he's my father. Do I like what happened? No. But would that make me really be bad? No. It's a worst case scenario. Some of you have not reached a worst case scenario. If Levi here says you're no longer my father, guess what? I don't even need to convince him. Whether he climbs up a mountain, a tree, my DNA is crying in there, my son, my son in there. It doesn't change. My DNA is inside. It's lodged in there. Whether he cries and runs around, they say whatever. I know, young men, if the doctor comes here and takes <laughs> your mind. This is the biggest problem some of you have not. You have not dealt with the worst case scenario. So when the devil does what he does to you, he knows exactly that if you're confessing, you're confessing. You know you can get to a level where you know you got this thing. You have confessed it enough. Now it's about to come. If it was money, it would take two weeks and the second week, the devil brings a bill you can't even pay. Your confession will run away like something. <laughs> Jesus got to his disciples and says, where is your faith? 
In other words, the faith, he looked for the faith. It had, it had gone. It flew away from his own disciples. What is it that you actually will stand if the devil tries you? Oh, you didn't get it. They didn't get that. The Bible says, what can separate us from the love of God? Is it poverty? Is it persecution? Is it drought? What was that scripture dealing with? Worst case scenario. What is your worst case scenario? <laughs> if it's a headache, if you notice, if it's a headache and you just feel this headache and you walk, I'm healed, I'm healed. The more you say I'm healed, the more painful. <laughs> I'm telling you, it will take you two minutes to re reject your own confession. You end up going like, ah, oh God, honestly, God, honestly, help me. Now you have canceled the equation because pain has gotten into you. Let me tell you something. If you maintain it in pain, you maintain it when, it's hurt, when it hurts. You maintain it when it gets to another level. You maintain it. One day the devil will know this one is not somebody to play with. The Bible says he will leave. But notice what the Bible says. He will leave for a season. If, if the devil could leave Jesus for a season, not forever, for a season. I told you before, there is a mountain where the devil buys human beings. The Bible says it this way. And I was taken, the Lord was taken to a mountain and was shown everything in the world. And he was told, God being told, I will give you all this. If you can only kneel down. The mountain of finances is where the devil is stealing your souls. Some of you are not even here in this church now. Why? Because they are working money. The devil has already said, if you can only bow to me on Sunday and work for money instead of going and worship God, I'll give you what you want. You can even hear someone having so many reasons, like, you know, my rent, you know, it's just Sunday, you know, Sunday. There is no job you cannot tell the boss I'm a Christian. That would be religious discrimination. You can actually win that in court. But because you like money so much more than God, you have been bought by the devil. You have sold your soul. He tried it with Jesus. Imagine the devil was not even afraid of Jesus. Met him and saw him. This is the guy that I worshipped in heaven. Let me tempt him. You, you, you from... Uh, from Benin. <laughs> From Chabalala. You actually think the devil will be scared of you. No. The mountain of finances is where the devil is stealing all your souls. But I'm here to tell you something. There is also a location. Where God can actually prove to you that those finances that you're looking for, that money you're looking for, is easily obtained. Amen. I decree and declare right this minute. Pazuje mangratila bangas. Zekuje mangratusia. Jesus. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. How we speak to sickness and sickness stops. How we speak to cancer and cancer leaves. Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, a specific mountain, say to this one, don't go to another one, to this mountain, be thou removed and be plugged up. Be thou removed. If you say to what? To this mountain, it shall obey you. Now notice, he didn't say it shall obey Jesus. Yeah. You. Me. Who speaks? Me. Me. Who does it obey? Me. Not Jesus. Yes, but notice when it doesn't obey, we always go, God. Yes. God did not say it obey me. Yeah. If you just sit in your house and tell yourself I'm not human, I think this is a confession. Yes. 
I want everyone who has got an, a, a, an any social media, just hashtag, I'm not human. I'm just not human. Sit down. Supernatural power of the believer. Discover the secrets to growing in the five dimensions of God's power. Order your copy of this best-selling book with over 100,000 copies sold by Hubert Angel from the Amazon Kindle Store or visit our online shop at www.hubertangel.org. Thank you, our partners and friends, for making it possible to bring this message to you. Those wishing to partner with Hubert Angel, please visit www.hubertangel.org. I'm not human. I said I'm not human. I'm not human. Just, just I'm not human. It doesn't need to be something else. I'm not human. I remember in, um, in a place called Ashton Underline in Manchester. And I've told you several times this story. And I, it's one of those days I used to be broke. <laughs> now, you see, when, when you have money and you say, I used to be broke, people think you are showing off. But if you get a job and you come here and say, I've got a job, people think it's a testimony. <laughs> now, if I say I'm rich now, it's showing off. It's just dimensions of testimonies that are now different. It's just different dimensions. May your dimension also be bigger. May your dimension be higher. May your dimension be greater than your enemy's dimension. Sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there. All right. Where is a chair? Can I get a chair? Mm, are you sure if I sit here, I'll be able to see later on? Now, I'm sitting here like this, and I'm sitting, and we've got one step, second step, and the third, because, of course, God created me long. Now, <laughs> he needed more space to anoint. Now, listen, I'm sitting here, and I'm, I know exactly who I am, but my money is not agreeing with my level. You know you can actually be at a certain location where you know the way the test I have have you ever wanted a Lamborghini and you know you are a toilet cleaner? You, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Where you have extravagant test, but the money in your bank does not agree with you. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus for your appetite to make your budget. <laughs> oh. May your test match what is in your bank. You, you think I'm begging it. I'm begging this thing to happen. You know, begging God for this thing to happen. I'm already decreeing it in your life. It's already happening as I'm talking to you. <laughs> Sit down. And I'm sitting there, and a bailiff is coming. And this bailiff was collecting a few amounts every week for something I owed. Oh, trust me, I owed. <laughs> Little stuff. Maybe they will come for 50 pounds or something, and I didn't have it that week. 40 something, 48 pounds or something. I didn't have it. Me. <laughs> he is approaching and I'm just saying, Jesus of Angola. Why, why, would, why, would, why would this God not just give me money? I, I need to, you know, and I knew I had a car that they could actually just repossess. And I'm sitting there like this. And the man comes to the stay there. And I started speaking in tongues. Not as a way of going anywhere. Just, you know, when you don't have anything to do. Have you ever driven a vehicle without a license? Yes. Do I have testimonies here and people? Yes. Witnesses? Yes. And you know your insurance. And Britain is crazy. If they catch you and you have no license, your insurance is now in void, even if it's there. Your MOT is no longer valid. Your tax for your car is no longer valid because you are a disqualified driver. You can't. You are an unqualified one. So I'm sitting there like this. And I'm just speaking in tongues. You know when you're driving with no license, when you see the police behind you, the prayer you do there, <laughs> angels will be encouraged. You get into some tongues you yourself have never gone into. Just a police car. 
Now, some people don't know they, you know, they did the right thing from beginning. But some of us, we just got in this country. No one changed any license anywhere. And you see a police guy, you just go like, Jima, Hankra, Kilaba, Andus. And when it goes past you, you go like, whew. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so there is a prayer you do because you need a, an answer. Then there is a prayer you do because that's the only thing that can come into your mind. You know it's not going to work. But let me just do whatever I can do. You find your words going ahead of your brain. Mm -hmm. So I began to speak in tongues. My mind was behind. And the men stepped on the first step. I'm thinking something is happening here. He went on the second step and stood there. My door. I'm sitting by the door. Three steps. I'm sitting on the third step high. And my legs are on the, the other last step. The third. One, two, third, three. And he steps on the first. Steps on the third. Stands between my legs. Knocks on my door. <laughs> something told me he is not seeing me. Why should I answer the door? <laughs> the Bible says and I find a way of escape a way of escape <laughs> said so there is a way of escape and I'm I'm looking at this guy he's knocking he starts writing you know that one that, that small letter that says you know I was here la, 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 la. and I'm just looking at him like uh uh the guy is not seeing me. Where was I? Mount Zion, brothers and sisters. Mount Zion. Hey! Mount Zion. I'm not trying to make you people who run away from bailiffs. I'm just trying to prove to you. There is a real world called Mount Zion. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm about to finish. Did I say that? I, yeah. There is a place called Mount Zion. A way of escape. He said, will provide even then a way of escape. Something that can cause you to run away. <laughs> what are you talking about? I know of a man. Whether in the flesh or in the spirit, I will not say. How the devil got into the house. Just here, Salford, Manchester. Got into the house, a room, got in there. And appeared physically to the man. And the man is looking at the devil and no, this is the devil. At first, the devil masquerades as an angel of light. He looks like an angelic being because he's an angel. And remember, his name is Lucifer. And Lucifer doesn't mean darkness, it means he's light. So when God created the devil, he called him light, not darkness. That means he wasn't created to sin. He was the perfect one with symbols and, and musical instruments in his bowels that if he says hello, it would go. <laughs> Music would follow when he speaks. <laughs> and the devil made a chaos. The light bulb blew up, smoke. Turned upside down the tables and the chairs and the plates in there. And open the window himself by supernatural force and left. And God whispered to the men and said, how can you allow such things to happen in your house? Physically happening. And immediately the men thought, what can I do? If the devil has done this to my bed, to my light, he said, okay, close the door, lock the door. And stood in the middle of the room and said, devil, come back. With no seconds, the devil came back and stood there. He said, can you make sure my table is nicely packed? <laughs> After you are done, you can leave. I tell you, there is a power inside of you that the devil himself will listen when you start talking. Yes. 
I was in Tbilisi with Pastor Ricky. Went to this cameraman, and this cameraman was we proved to the cameraman in Tbilisi, who is Muslim, that God speaks to this day. After that, he was quiet. He was just shocked. He went home. He went on his own page and wrote and put my photo and says he knows everything. <laughs> Something about your life. You can access any file you need. If God can access volumes of what the devil says. Watch this. In Punjab, India, we are prophesying. And Muslims came to the meeting. Not only Muslims, even uh, Sikh, all right, Hindu, they came to the meeting. And I said, Muslims, you are all business people. Come to the front. I know you like business. And they went to the front. Then I asked, what, what, what business are you in? They said their businesses. And I said, look, I believe in Jesus Christ, that he is Lord. And you believe in what you believe in. But let's do a bet today. You are business people. If I prophesy about your life, and your God does not close my eyes to see your secrets, then you have to worship my God. Hey. What's this? And I said, now, I'm giving you an opportunity to talk to your God, to close my eyes, so that me who is using Jesus will not be able to see you who is using Allah. They said, it's okay, it's a good deal. It's on video. I shook their hands like this. I said, now I'm starting. Are you okay now that it's done now? You have closed all doors. They said, yes. I started from one, going into the bedroom, getting to what was in the bedroom. The conversation they had, even some dreams, and all of them were shaking hands like this. I said, yeah, now believe it. Pass on my greatest. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. There is a power in us. That all we need to do is, listen, it doesn't mean to say I have arrived. Yeah. Paul says I fought a good fight. Yeah. Then he says to go to heaven is actually gain for me. But to stay with you is more advantageous for you. He says then I'm caught in between two things. Imagine a man who didn't want to go and who wanted to go. Wow. Have you ever been homesick? I know a guy called Sengwayo, who was a founder of a church in Zimbabwe. And his favorite song was, I've never been homesick before. The man got homesick, wanting to go to heaven. <laughs> Imagine praying that God, please take me. <laughs> when you miss Zion so much, that you don't even want your flesh here anymore. You want your spirit there. Don't pray that prayer. It can be answered quick. <laughs> but just imagine, are you sure you can actually pray that prayer? You. Ah. Say, God, please. You know I'm just a young boy. Let me enjoy a little bit. God said, no, but heaven is more enjoyable than this one. When we started saying just a few months, a few weeks, right? Do you see him? Says he knows everything. He was convinced by God. What causes us to be like this? What causes it? He received Christ before we left. That's what he's saying. He received Christ. It's easy when God begins to speak. It's easy. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I have um, a minute left. A minute, just one minute. Just one minute. I can't wait for a time. I, I was so excited to see some of our youth going into, into, uh, into town, healing the sick. I like that. Let me just say this. I'm one person who wants to impart something in my people. Let me tell you something. If I'm the only one who is healing the sick, then this church is lost. Yes, if I'm the only one who is able to prophesy, then this church is lost. 
if at any time, listen to me good, if at any time you hear you be an angel opening his mouth and saying to you, I'm the only one on earth who hears from God, please take me to a mountain. Let's put me in chains. The same oil I poured on you in prayer, pour on me. Tie me to a tree. Pray for me. I would have lost it. That's what we call building a cult. When a man begins to think he's the only one who hears from God. When a man begins to think I'm the only one. Everyone else does not know God. You are the only one who hears from You are the one now speaking for him. Only one. No other person can hear. You have a pastor here, Pastor Ronnie. He hears from God, he speaks. Pastor Titus still speaks to God. Pastor Felix is prophesying. So many in our ministry prophesying now. What causes it to happen is because we know I'm not the only one we should be hearing from God. You should hear from God. Every believer, it's your opportunity. This is the time to hear from God. Amen. But what world are you in? Right this minute, what world are you living in? Can you honestly say, I know for sure my God can take me to another level where I hear God clearly. Let me tell you something you might not like to hear. God didn't even need to send prophets. If Christians really do their duty, you don't need prophets. And I'm a prophet telling you that. You honestly do not need a prophet. You have the Holy Spirit. You don't need a prophet. The Bible does not say you shall be led by prophets. It says you shall be led by the Holy Ghost. Your spirit attuned to the Holy Spirit is what you need. You don't need a prophet. The reason why you still need a prophet is one reason. Because you're failing to do what a Christian should be doing. And because of that, Christians now, prophets now will control you until you die. And will take advantage of you until you die. This oil today, this oil tomorrow, this special water tomorrow, if the water is sold out, now they go for the mother of all waters. <laughs> After you buy that one, super anointed water. After you buy the super anointed water, the granddaddy of water. <laughs> and you'll be buying. As long as you keep buying, they keep selling. It's supply and demand. If you demand it, they supply. So it's so easy to be fooled. Am I against prophets? Not one minute. Am I talking against other prophets? Not one minute. But Christians who are dumb, wake up. Amen. They will sell it to you. Until one day you open your Bible and realize, and also, wait a minute, here it's written here. Amen. I can actually hear God by the Holy Ghost on my own. I don't need another man somewhere. So you're still acting like you're hearing. I want to get to a level where I have a church where everyone says, God was speaking to me. And he told me this. This is the main reason we do not, we do not. This is the main reason we are not hearing God speak to us clearly. And the other reason is simple. You got born again to Christ, not to a preacher. So now when a preacher disappoints you, you divorce Christ. Today is my day. Today is my day. Today is my day. Is my Where day. Where do you know me from? Where do you know, how do you know me? You're my spiritual grandfather. Uh, what happened? What happened? When I was in Uganda, uh -huh. I, I went to prison. I was wrongly accused. Uh -huh. The family set me up. Uh -huh. 
and I saw you in a vision, mm. and you came to me in prison, and you said, grandson... So you were in prison? Yes, I was in prison, and you said, you have a mission. You're going to come Jesus, up. remember what we were ministering. <laughs> this man here was in prison, yes. and I'm not in any prison, no. and I visit him in prison. Yes, and you came there, and then I, I was going to the church when you were on the good news uh, tour in Uganda. So you were in the good news tour meeting? Yes, I came, I said, I have to go. And then you came and you prayed for me and I felt something come out of my body. I was dying. It's like something was sucking my blood. Wow. And you prayed for me and I was delivered and I said, I have to come and testify. This is, second, this is the second time I'm Jesus. here. Today is my day. Listen, just imagine that somebody is somewhere. I visit them in prison. How, how does it happen that you visit a man in prison? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And why is it that I left the main auditorium to come to an overflow to meet a man who is actually preaching or proof of what I preached. Listen to me. You don't need this person. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, prophet. You don't need this lady. Okay, prophet. I'm listening, sir. Ah. Give me give me direction. Professor, what should prophet, you do sir. to this lady? What the Lord has said, sir. And that's what we are asking. As the Lord said, prophesy, prophesy. <laughs> prophesy. Prophesy, today is my day. In the realm of the spirit, yes, you need to understand, this lady here, yes, there is a failure for you to even do anything for her to be here. Yes, it's you true. You love her so much. Yes, it's true. But now she is another man. Yes, it's true. The name is jo John, 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 or something. Yes. It's, uh, uh. yes. Leave this one alone now. Yes, prophet. I'm listening. Yes, I heard you. Prophet. I decree and declare. Yes, prophet. Prophesy, prophet. prophesy, prophet. prophesy major, prophesy. Prophet. Go deeper. How do you know you have somebody that is trying to come to you? That is trying to come here. You have done everything. Everything yes, now. Yes, I've done everything. Papers applied everything. Yes, I've, I'm just waiting to put them there so that they do the biometrics. That's it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is a pregnancy. Hey. There is a pregnancy. Yes. You are sure it's yours? Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just asking. It is. Maybe Go Pastor Luku will tell us. <laughs> Prophesy, grandfather. Today is my day. Today is my day. <laughs> Keep I'm looking, son. Keep looking. Whatever you tell me is the truth. Keep looking. It's already starting. Keep looking. Keep looking. Prophesy. Mm -hmm. Prophesy. Let me tell you how it's done. I believe it. I receive it, my miracle, my miracle, say, I receive it, I believe it, I receive it, my miracle. Financially, God is about to take you to another level. I receive, that is my Things friend. are about to change in your life. I receive. That the devil himself will be shocked. I receive, that's been my prayer. You know one thing? Come, come. Come, look. Stand here. Hold the mic. Hold the mic. Yes. Now, you see this now? Yes, sir. If I say you see this, right? Mm -hmm. hmm. Do you know why I said, do you see this? You. No, I don't know that. I saw, see, Joan? Joan is what? Is this lady? Yes. Now. Now, watch this. Watch this. What's your son? My son is Williams. That's his name. The That's guy. the boyfriend's name. The yes. other guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> go deeper. Go deeper. No, but it's not him. But trust me. <laughs> In the room of the spirit. Yes, <laughs> Decree and declare right this minute yes, that financially you are going to take another form. I receive. Things are going to change over your life that the enemy will never do anything to displace you, to remove you, I to receive. do anything to kill you. I, I speak life over your life. <laughs> ah, you came together. You came together. Ah, wait. I'll tell you what to do with this uh, beautiful lady. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I will yes. tell you what to do with this beautiful lady. Yes, Grandpa. And then um, whatever God says, you take it. If God says, take it back, yes. that's all right. If he says, it's up to you, then it will be up to you. If he says, leave, leave. Yes, Grandpa. We, you, you don't need to do anything that God never says do. Don't worry about it. It might look like, wow, I'm about to lose. It might look like everybody's going to be against you. Yes, it's true. It's true. That's what's but wait, well, you need to do what God says. Yes, yes Grandpa. Just do what God says. Yes, Grandpa. Great. What's this one now? This is with my mom when she saw you. Oh, ma sublejo ma kanom. Yes. There is also something happening. Yes. Let me tell you something. Yes, tell me. Prophesy, prophet. I'm putting a relationship between you and your father in the right direction. Yes, please. That's the truth. It's in the wrong direction because of this. Very true. Very true. Because it's like you used your father. Yes. I mean it in the right way. Okay. To secure a money. Money, yes, yes. So that it gets into your father and like your father's company or your company. Yes, exactly, exactly. And this is a cousin of yours. Yes, that's exactly. That's very and the cousin of yours took money. It was in batches, like three batches. Yes, exactly. It was hundred thousand US dollars. Yes, prophesy. And that hundred thousand US dollars is the reason why you went to jail. Yes, exactly. And the person who was supposed to go to jail did not even go to jail. No. In fact, he even told you one time over the phone you would die there. Yes, exactly. I decree and declare. Pazu mankovit aklishtu. Rako mankrote seligutia. Sezu mankreta. Fire Holy Ghost. Fire Holy Ghost. Pasosum. Palutin on crota syllabus. Raise your hands, everyone here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. For these that are here right now, Every increase you desire, it is given to you now. Every prosperity you prayed for, it is done now. You thought you were in the overflow, but let me tell you something. Overflow is happening to you now. Don't worry, mama. Listen to me. Sometimes you don't even need to see me prophesy to you. Yes, thank you. It's thank so you. simple. I told you before, prophets, you don't need them. Yes. <laughs> you just need God. Yes. God. All you need is the word. You don't need prophets. Yes. Thank you. Now you might say, oh, what is he saying? Do we not need the prophetic? We need the prophetic, yes. We need the prophetic. But prophets, hmm, today is what? Sunday, yes. Sunday, Saturday, yes. Friday, yes. Thursday. Yes, Thursday. I thought you came in on dream. Thursday what? Thursday night. Uh huh. And Bibi Angel, you say you're coming. Your Bibi Angel and myself came into yes. your room. Not came into my room, but in the dream. Yeah, in the dream. Yes, that's exactly what we are. Yeah, uh -huh. So I was told my daughter. I said, "This is what happened on." Thursday. And this is it. Yeah. And Just you, as you and, came, and you f we fixed your problem. Yes. And when I walked in here. I touched you first. Yes, thank you, Lord. But imagine your deliverance took place on Thursday. Thursday, thank you. There was no service. <laughs> Listen to me. You might think I went to her house. No, there is a location we meet. It's Mount Zion. <laughs> there is a location where you stay. I stay there too. And we meet there, and then we meet physically on earth. We have a dual life. We are not human. You need to go home and tell yourself, I'm not human. I'm not human. I'm not human. Don't say you've been angels, not human. You are not human. Go beyond. I love you. God is about to take you to another level. Don't worry what the enemy has done and or said. It is not what the enemy is doing that you have to worry about. Yeah. I saw in the realm of the spirit something bigger than you. Yeah. Yes, yes. You are here in the overflow here, right? Yeah. But something bigger was taking place. And I saw the angel writing in the air and said, write on paper what you see. 
And I saw things moving to an extent where your finances in your family, you are struggling. Yes. 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 If I look at the people that are in your family, you are the one struggling. Yes. <laughs> Everyone is successful. It's you. Yes. <laughs> that the care of the family has gone to. Go on, Major. <laughs> I don't know much about him. Okay? All I know is there is one prophecy I have for him. Money is about to change hands. I receive. Money is about to take. Because even the thing he's trying, he's trying to buy this and sell this and buy this and sell this and things are not taking place. Even get things from, from India. Take this thing from China, let's, 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 if we order here, we order here and we go here. Listen to me. Yes, yes. I saw in the realm of the spirit. Uh, I even saw somebody. This is for you to know, I know you. Somebody was moving. And people had guns around the men. People had guns. And every, he comes out of a, of a car, they want to follow. He comes out of this, they want to follow. And the Lord said, ask him who is Ben. It's like somebody in a government. He's my brother. Your brother. Second race, an MLA back home. He's a minister. In a, in a He's a minister of the government, minister. like a politician. Yeah, politician. Shaman Crawford, Alex Kubaya. And the Lord minister to me, don't worry about this. Something is about to take shape. And your relationship is about to be tightened yes. with Ben. Yes, yes. Because it has been broken. Some things were taking place. And some people had said a lot of things that when they look at you and look at life of Ben, they think, ah, what's the difference here? Why are people like this? <laughs> and I saw another one, like Mela Gris. Mela Gris. Yes, yes. Like firstborn. Benjamin is number two. Yes. Paso Malacrofia. Yes. To him now. If I talk right now, how many children do you have? Three. Three. Okay, now. You have three. Three children. That's a good number. What is the name of my third son? Third son is Jude. Is Jude. Do you know Jude? My eldest son. <laughs> <laughs> In the realm of the spirit, it's going to be a fast work that the enemy was trying to do. But the Holy Ghost is going to change and shift everything. That you, when you begin to walk, people will say, look at this man. Look at how things have changed. Look at how it has turned around. Look at how the world has turned around because of you. As money is coming, money shall come also to you, brother. It's so shocking. This money, listen to me. This time, there was a time a business came along. It was to sell things that were like techno, you know, like computer things and stuff like that. And guess what? He didn't quite get into the grasp, grasp of it. But now God is saying, I'm moving something, but it will be in textiles. I'm moving something into clothes. <laughs> May your hands grab money. May prosperity know you. Amen. Everyone that has left you has nothing to do with what is happening in the future. God has sanctioned you for greater things. Jesus. You see, when, when you move and you see somebody and God says, that's a great person. Wow. But it seems as if there were preventions. People preventing. preventing people just preventing things to happen. That it was like an, what Africans would call an almost anointing. When you are almost getting there and somebody closes the door when you're about to get to the money that you're looking for somebody closes the door when you're about to get to the breakthrough you need somebody closes the door but i decree and declare right this minute in the name of jesus that power must change hands prosperity right now Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Palogen non Christ, I speak finances over your life. Every demonic influence 
that tried to prevent prosperity. It is cancelled right now. Banished in the mighty name of Jesus. Rejoice, be glad, put the devil on the run and have a lot of fun. It is your time. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Something is about to take place over your life. And there is a change taking place. When I first laid my eyes on you, I began to see that things have not been moving the way they were supposed to move. That's true, Papa. But the reality is, God is planning things behind the scenes. Yes, Papa. And as I look at you right now, you are a great man. I receive it, Father. You are a very, very great I man. I receive it, Father. This is your first time here? It's my second time I was here last Sunday, Papa. You were here last Sunday? Yes, sir. Wow. Oh, just imagine how good God is. That you are able to be sitting here in this ministry, hearing what God is saying, and all of a sudden, God says, I want to talk to you. Amen. The Lord said, don't worry about your application. Whoa. Mm. Ah, relax, don't worry, don't worry. I know the application. <laughs> you see, listen. There is a big difference in me focusing and, and zeroing in on an issue like this is your issue, why you are here. That's what I decided to do in my life. Just focusing on one issue, boom, this is it. That's why you are here. You are here for one thing. You are here for one thing. That application, don't worry about it. Amen, I receive it. This is another application you should not worry about. The other one. <laughs> we... Papa, this is just... working for this company. This oil company. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't worry about it. Because in the same place where the company is, God said, I'm raising you to even own your own. Oh. Oh. This is... This is Angola we are talking of. Yes, Papa. Angola. Angola. And this is something to do with energy and oil, oil and energy. Yes, Papa. It's my dream and I've applied for an, for an internship position in the supply chain management. Uh, area. For what? For, for Chevron in Angola, an oil company. Chevron is what? It's an oil company. Yes. Mm. The Lord Minister to me, don't worry. The one we are looking at right now is already a multi-millionaire. We well, listen. Listen to this. We are not human. I said we are not human. You, we are not human. We are not human. Raise your hands wherever you are. Raise your hands. Listen. Don't worry about this. This lady here, don't worry. Yes. God is about to do something. Amen. Amen. Something Amen. great. Amen. Over your life. Go deeper. Should I go deeper? Yes, sir. She's my first daughter. Okay. Listen to this. The Lord ministered to me. There was a time when you were really, really praying hard for her. Yes. And things began to move, and she had a connection with God at that time. Mm -hmm. And something shifted. Not because she's no longer listening, but she's no longer as spiritual as she was beginning. Let me That's very true. Now. And the funny part of it is, when you were naming her, God gave you a reality in your head. Because I saw it written divine. Divine. Di divine, she's my daughter. Yeah, this is the name that I give it to her. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Something good is about to take place. Amen. Watch this. There is also something you need to understand with. She, it's like she's doing. Let me tell you something. God said, I'm taking her. Mm -hmm. And I saw a name written. Yeah. You might not know the name yourself. Makatapana. Makatapana. Matabakana. Okoyo. Listen. This is in Congo Brazzaville. We are coming from Congo Brazzaville. <laughs> and I saw like instruments, like 
like something that she will get into. But right now, she will start with doing small things, like, you know, like little, little things. But the main issue is she's using like, uh, you know, cubic zirconia. You know, like small stones that are not yeah, precious like, stones. Like or, or just using these things yeah. and, and decorating things and decorating even for the house, for the what? Exactly. This is what she's doing. <laughs> and the Lord ministered to me that he's about to do something that is beyond that. Amen. Because I saw precious materials. Amen. Precious minerals. Amen. Coming into her hands. Amen. And the Lord said, you are looking at money. It's not money only. It's real money. Amen. Glory. Because of time, raise your hands. Good News World with Hubert Angel. Provoking a reaction and always worth hearing.